14, he goes, he goes up and down and then the arm. The margins are really small. We have a lot of capital invested. So it's not for anybody that wants to. I, do, I still name them all, not that they go by the names because they like numbers, I like names. Homeowners in Managa were allowed back on their properties after firefighters chased flames away. Marlene Snyder took us along as she ventured back home. When we first got there, we were just thankful that we had our house. And after we realized it was in flames, we were thankful we have our family. Hers was one of 12 destroyed by the fire. It's just hard to see this. 40 acres of land. This is our four bedroom home. And Eight years of memories. Coming in our front door, in our kitchen. What was a haven is now unrecognizable. There was no darkness. The, the roof was still all intact. As Marlene tried to measure what was lost. How, how would I possibly know looking at this? She couldn't put a price on what was most valuable. There's still the stillness, but uh, the beauty is just stripped away. Now as Jacques dies down for Marlene and her family, a new fire is building inside, burning with questions, fighting for answers. Where do we start? Where do we start with cleanup? Where do we go with tearing down? If you like and get your eggs from a Hornbacher's store, there's a good chance they come from here. It's a small family operation that makes about four cents on every dozen sold. The margins are really small. We have a lot of capital invested, so it's not for anybody that wants to put some chickens in, more power to them, I'll encourage them, but they better not expect great big returns on it. Ammon Bear of Lake Park says if the new bill passes, he would have to upgrade all the hen's cages. Two years ago at his nephew's plan, a similar upgrade cost about $2.5 million. The new bill proposal would be a major game changer. All these cages would have to be bigger, deeper, wider. They'd need to have a perch in them. They'd also need to have a scratch pad. And for 1.4 million birds, that's a huge upgrade. Uh, by 2028, 2029, He'd have to tear all of that equipment out, start completely over, and the cost to do that for him would be almost $5 million to maintain his current level of production. And add up the whole bear clan, which is five brothers and their kids who all own a stake in the egg farm, they'd have to shell out close to $30 million to bring their cages up to snuff. The bears work with 1.4 million hens, which is nothing compared to the nation's largest egg producers that have anywhere from 8 to 28 million of them. Bottom line, it makes a transition for the bear farms a lot tougher. It would be much easier for the large multinational companies that have millions of birds because they are able to, to, to transition to this new cage one building at a time, one complex at a time. Which Bear says is one more example of how small farms can fall by the wayside. This is our robot Apollo 114. He goes, he goes up and down and then the arm controls and the arm can go down and up. They have six weeks to build their robot. We, we unveil the playing field, we give them a kit of parts. Some motors, some servos, a remote control, a bunch of plywood, nuts and bolts, and we say build a robot. There are a lot of really good competitors and there are a lot of really good teams. So it's like it's not like we can just say, oh, we're going to go out and we're going to win. No, we actually have to work for it. Yeah, our robot can turn um, about 360 degrees either direction. can also extend up to two feet. Our claw uh, opens and closes. This, this really fun atmosphere, um, there's, there's going to be music, there's going to be bands. Some of the teams will bring cheerleaders. And we're trying to create that, that basketball arena kind of feel cheering fans, except they're cheering for robots. It's not nerdy. It's very cool. At the Weyra Dairy Farm in Trail, Minnesota, Wayne and Deborah Vettelson have taken on a profession that as old as it is, is constantly changing. I, do, I still name them all, not that they go by the names, because they like numbers, I like names. Back when they started 28 years ago, Red Rover was a really pretty red car. When they all had names, even Wayne's father, a retired dairy farmer himself, was fascinated with the industry's evolution. He was always anxious to come over here and see what was different. And, and he liked to see it, not that he wanted to milk cows, but he liked to see it. 
with nearly 300 cows going through the parlor three times a day, the Vettelsons have to think outside the box if they want to remain competitive, which in this business boils down to milk quality. Well, it's, it's money that we make or, or lose because of quality. And milk quantity. We're averaging per cow around 80 pounds a cow, which uh, in gallons of milk is around 10 gallons a cow per day. But not every cow is created equal. We had one cow named Lucy that was the best cow we ever had. And she had one daughter, and the daughter didn't survive. And she, that's not her daughter. <laughs> Some just have more to give, and they're rewarded for it. So how do they take care of their VICs, their very important cows? Each one of these top producers is equipped with a water bed, 14 gallons underneath my feet, and they have about 70 stalls all for their top producers. Yeah, the cows really like them. They took to them easily. Uh, the first time we watched cows get on them, and you, you seen everything jiggle that they were stepping on, that's, uh, that was different, but uh, they, they adapted to them really fast. While the average cow produces about 80 pounds of milk a day, the ones that lay in these luxurious quarters, they come closer to about 95 pounds a day. The idea is simple. Happier, more comfortable cows give more. When he first said he was going to do it, I said, you're crazy. It's way too cold up here and up north, but it's worked out really well. Well, my cows take care of me, so I better take care of them. The old school beds can be hard on a cow's hocks and knees. Getting up and down with all that weight, day in and day out, on a hard surface is tough on their oversized bodies. We've had some cheaper ones, and, and they may feel comfortable right away, but they get they start getting compressed just from the weight of the cow being on them day after day and and pretty soon they're just as hard as the concrete they're laying on. Not only are these cows producing more, but they're living longer too. I suppose the rubber is half inch thick. Their vet says giving a cow a comfortable bed can do as much as double its lifespan. And after going from just 10 cows in 1984 to milking 300 cows today, the Vettelsons know doing things differently is the only way to stay in the business. One of these days we've got to slow down, but <laughs> not yet, I guess. March 1st, every year. <laughs> and they've got the nice little sign, reminded me, and I was excited about it. This is a national holiday for me, March 1st. <laughs> I mark it on my calendar because it's very cute. Open the market. Well, you know, I had to be part of the tradition. Uh, <laughs> part of my... Uh, me and my coworkers would go out every March 1st, make sure we head out to the Dairy Queen. That's kind of the way it's developed, and it uh, makes it a lot of fun. Oreo cheesecake, and that one's mint Oreo. I, I think it's, you know, in the Minnesota blood. You know, you just got to have ice cream any time of the year, and why not March 1st? Spring, the snow is melting, it gives you something to look forward to. It means summer to me. <laughs> like, I'm excited for summer to come now. Sounds good. Thank you. I've lived here all my life and I, I love Dairy Queen. Like, hello, it opened up today and I'm here already. <laughs> Pure and simple. Baseball and the Dairy Queen opens. That's all I need. That's a little steep. It's a view most never get to see and most would never want to see. Look at over the side of an eight story building. But before we get to that view, we have to get to the top which comes with its obstacles. So this is legit the only way to the tippy top. We have to climb this like radio tower. Or we can use a ladder, but we don't have one out here. <laughs> so we left the ladder downstairs, but once at the highest point, safety is first and foremost. Time to harness up and get ready to wash some windows and rigging on the rooftop will keep us secure on our journey down below. But hooking in comes with a little surprise person that's dropping hook up their own lines that way they're responsible for their own life so <laughs> so I'm responsible for my own life yes and we'll double check <laughs> we're screwed Joe's gonna triple check and Amy's gonna quadruple check okay okay so if I've never done this before I'm yep. just gonna hook myself up no worries <laughs> hooked in quadruple checked it's time to meet the bosun okay. chair or window washer seat allowing us to be more agile was a scaffolding and there's a lot more gear involved okay and all we do is we're harnessed in then second we strap into this chair hooked up okay it's locked safe and secure do I really have to go over now <laughs> it's time to hop over the side of this building I think my heartbeat is uh, out of control 
we decide to wash some windows, which is more important than you think. Not washing off dirt and grime can decrease the window's lifespan, like plaque decaying a tooth. That's a buildup of exhaust, dirt, it all gets baked into the glass. And if these buildings are not maintained, well, then you're going to have to replace a lot of glass, and that gets pretty spendy. The team at A&B Windows don't only really wash them, but since they're the only ones that will ever see this spot of the building, they're also looking for any areas of concern. Keep track of what's going on in the building. Are there any real loose ends? Um, is the building starting to shift too much where we're starting to get leaks? This is the kind of, kind of company we are where we keep track of that for our boss. It's not easy descending hard on your hands and arms. But once we've reached the ground, holy crap, I'll get you. my hand is so tired. Look where we just came from. Even though I survived that drop, how were my window washing skills? They turned out great. Your first couple windows ever, I was impressed. So hey, you're welcome to join the team anytime.